this video is about working on your Bosto, bleeding it, uh, making sure that uh, you've got it thoroughly bled after you've maybe worked on it, changed out a valve. Uh, what we're looking at right here is the uh, tank where you put your antifreeze and uh, that sight glass should be completely full if you've worked on the Wabasto because you have to have a head pressure on the uh, coolant pump. The coolant pump does not pull coolant. It uses head pressure. So you need, you need to make sure that this tank is filled. Inside, this uh, Wabasto installation is in a marathon coach. And inside this panel, the on this coach, this is coach 632, there's um, three relays right there. Uh, the one that says REH, that's engine heat. The one that says RDS, that's driver's side. And the one that says RWI, that's with, a, with Bosto ignition. Now next to that, on this panel that Marathon puts in is a three amp fuse. So that's the first thing, if there's problems in the Wabasto not firing and that sort of thing, you really want to look at that 3M fuse and make sure that it's not blown for any reason. Uh, if it has blown, that there might be something else that's caused it. Uh, but this Wabasto, the relay mark WI, is the one that's going to ignite the unit. The other two are um, relays that control uh, solenoid valves, and I'm going to show you those solenoid valves here in a minute. So the Marathon, my Wabasto, is an Arctic Heat Wabasto. And it's inside the driver's side panel just in front of the uh, rear radiator. And uh, right now the unit is cycling. But the two solenoid valves, this valve is for engine heat. And this valve is for coolant. This valve here comes on when you turn your ignition key on. When you turn your ignition key on, this valve is normally open and this valve will shut. This valve is normally closed. When you turn your key on and you turn the or you turn the Wabasto on, this valve will open. This valve is the driver's side solenoid. When you turn your Wabasto on, that valve will open as well. Over here there's two there's the driver's side solenoid and right next to it is a little another valve that is like a Parker Hannafin uh, open and close valve for the line. So this is like a return coming back to the system. So the unit is firing up. The coolant pump on this one is an older coolant pump. It's a U4810. That pump cannot draw coolant. It uses the head pressure of the tank. So we back off a little bit, the unit is cycling right now, um, I'm doing a bunch of checks. There's the fuel filter there, this is a, what I've noticed is there's a difference in fuel filters out there. There's a company out of Virginia that has very good pricing on Wabasto parts, but the one thing they have is that's a true Wabasto filter. I bought some Wabasto filters and they're made in Russia and they're very cheap, but this one is Mark Wabasto, and uh, it's very good quality. Um, I'll show you a little later on in the video the company I bought this from. Um, so we see on the ch on the display right here that light marked 12 volt heat is on. The Wabasto will also come on if you turn the 12 volt water heater on. Right now, 12 volt heat, that's the heat, that's turning on the SMX or cruise air uh, system. And those heaters are inside various compartments on my bus, not yours. So the first compartment where I have a 12 volt heater, and if we pan out here, you see two. The one on the right is a cadet heater. That's a 110 heater. The one on the left doesn't have any knobs on it. It's the 12 volt heater and it's hidden underneath a panel. Now Marathon puts a little valve in there, that little valve right there. 
and that little black tube that we see, that's the bleed valve. So if you work on the system and you get coolant, you should work from the front to the back. Um, what I do is I've got a little test box that I can run the coolant pump on the system. So I turn the bus on, I get the engine working, I get the coolant pump working on the Webasto, not with the system on, and I start bleeding air out of this system. And uh, there was plenty of air in it on the recent uh, service that I did. So we start here at the back, make sure the bus is on a level surface, and we start, ble uh, start bleeding coolant. You just open that valve right there, all the way up until you see a steady stream of coolant. And you want to do this a couple times from front to back to make sure you get all the air out. And my, uh, my bus, not yours, runs in pairs, so we're looking at the galley. And to the left is the 110 Cadet heater. And here, underneath this removable panel, is the 12 volt heater. And once again, there's a valve right there. And there's the hose. And so this would be the second one you would bleed. Again, go in front to back. Till no air, you got a steady stream of coolant coming out of that black hose. Now up here in the front of the bus is uh, the Prevost installed uh, uh, driver's air system. Uh, this is where the uh, heat exchangers are at for both the air conditioning and the heater. And these two fans that are running right here are connected up to the cruise air part. There's two fans that if anybody's ever worked on one of these things that are hidden down there, they're part of the Prevo system. You can hardly get to those. You almost have to take the front of the bus apart in order to bring those fans that are way down inside there. Uh, but these are the fans that are on the 12 volt system. And so uh, this valve that bleeds the 12 volt system is right here. And here's the hose for it. So you put this hose inside your tank. I use a gallon of the coolant jug. I put that hose in the tank and I open that valve right there, this valve, until nothing and all the air is out of the system. And then what I do is I, again, go from, I go back to front. So this is my last one, the third one. Then I go back to the galley and I bleed that again. And I go back to the bedroom, I bleed that one more time, and I come back and do it one, one more pass. To make sure the system in all three zones is working, I crank the temperature way up to 81 degrees. And on a marathon, you see how that little heat light is flashing? So what you have to do to make heat come on on this is uh, see how it's steady right now? We can shut it off. But on a marathon, what you have to do is you have to tap that button twice, rapidly. And it'll start flashing, and then up there it'll say heating. And so that turns these fans on down here, and it starts, it would demand that the Wabasto come on. So, so on the Wabasto, on the top here, my bus, not yours, my Wabasto, this is where we bleed the coolant and we put a 7 16 wrench on this nut and we crack that until we get a steady flow of coolant coming out here and what I do is I run this line into a gallon jug and uh, when we get a steady flow of air coming out of here this is the final point that I bleed this would be uh, probably one of the first points outside the bus that I bleed then go inside and bleed the rest of them inside and this would be the final point. And I'm looking for to, just to get all the air out of here again. And then this has a little cap on it right now. So the unit is running uh, uh, fine. These, uh, you know, you can put your hand on top of these solenoids. This one over here is warm. Uh, so that means that it's keeping, now the system's coming on. So it'll start uh, opening and closing stuff, but the system is, uh, is working properly now. Um, what'll happen, is if you don't have if you don't have um, this coolant out of here you'll blow this little fuse right here this is the over temp fuse with a little yellow dot on the top this one here is a control thermostat and a control limiter on my bus not yours 
this Wabasto is in a stainless steel enclosure. It's what they call, Wabasto refers to this as an Arctic heating system, all right? When you have an Arctic heating system, this control thermostat has a red and green wire. This is important because this will go to 167 degrees Fahrenheit. The orange and white therm thermostat goes to a lesser temperature, and I don't know what that is right now, but you can look it up. This right here is a, this shuts the system on and off. Right now, this is a little warm, but this is what's turning this on and off. So it's sensing the coolant, and it's running the pump, and it's running the motors and stuff, but this is really the most important thing in your control circuit right here. This over temp, if this blows, this system's not gonna work anymore. And trust me, I've learned the hard way. I've blown three of these fuses because I had air in the system. But once learning how to get the air out, uh, the system's running uh, perfectly right now. So the system's on, and uh, you can see that there's no different uh, discolored smoke coming out of here. It's burning nice and clear, and that's a good sign. So, um... I wanted to show you something here that uh, because I, I burned out a couple of these uh, fuses and um, these over temp fuses, they'll blow at 280 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, you know, Rudy, Rudy Leggett uh, out of Houston has helped me a lot. I've bought parts from him. Uh, this company advertises on eBay. That's how I found them. But, um, and I've ordered a couple fuses from them and the filters, the true Robosto filters. But on my re recent purchase, which uh, was this week, they sent me this beautiful catalog. And um, this catalog has all the stuff about Wabasto in it. Uh, I've never seen this catalog before, but they sent it to me. And um, so here's, here's the different uh, Wabastos. All right, so I have a DB210 24 volt. There's a normal enclosure, and here's the Arctic enclosure, all right? And so it shows you all the parts. These folks are commercial. They deal with the commercial trucks. Um, then they sent me this nice little thank you card right here for purchasing a couple fuses from them. Now, this is my second order. Uh, now, the original red-green uh, control thermostat was made by Honeywell, and the reason I know that, I got the part off of it. And I contacted Honeywell because these thermostats are expensive and I'm trying to figure out how to get an alternate source because they're really just uh, thermostats that you would use for any type of heater. So Honeywell actually sent me their drawing uh, that made the red-green thermostat and it shows what, what that thermostat does. So that thermostat opens at 75 degrees Celsius, which is 167 degrees plus or minus six and it closes at 154.4 Fahrenheit and 68 degrees Celsius. So that is what the basic Robosto thermostat is supposed to uh, work uh, opening and closing, all right? So when it opens and closes, that's sending the signal to the little control box that's there, which is, you know, basically uh, turning every all the functions on. That's This is the thing that's, that's uh, controlling all this. But this is good information to know. If you have the technical specs on something, and then this is showing what the thread size is and stuff, you can actually almost look this stuff up. Now, these are no longer available through Honeywell. Uh, but there is the number right there, that 245-RBV-922-7. Uh, that's the actual Honeywell part number. And the LC L75C... That is the opening temperature. So that's what was on the actual Honeywell thermostat that I pulled out of the bus. So, so this is right out of the Wabasto catalog. But what I wanted to explain here is, again, I always look for alternate sources. And you got to know something about how something functions in order to know what you can buy and what would be a good substitute. So what I did is I called a company called Sure Marine out of California. And again, they're a great source for Obostos. Really, their technical support is unbelievable. Uh, but what they did is they gave me, uh, when I showed them the pump, there is the uh, Wabasto pump number of the pump that's in this bus, all right? And what I wanted to know 
was what the flow of that pump was. Well, the, the pump flows seven gallons per minute at a bar pressure of 0.15. And you can see right here that for that pump to work and to actually circulate fluid, it has to have a five foot head pressure, all right? So that's the importance of keeping that tank uh, full when you're uh, getting ready to bleed your system and get it to, to, to run. Now you can see I started writing down some alternate part numbers. There's this Johnson uh, part number for a pump, but you can see it only flows at five gallons per minute. So I'll find an alternate for it, uh, but uh, this kind of gives you an idea of the workings of the pump. You're not gonna find anything about the pump on the pump. You gotta kind of call some technical people and find out from them how this works. So this is the Wabasto part number of the little overheat thermostat. This is the critical thermostat. This is your third line of defense for these systems. If this thing burns out, but uh, you can see uh, it's ex pretty, pretty expensive. Um, $49 through eBay, through the company out of Virginia, uh, all the way up to $65, you know, through some other sources on the, on the internet. And then you gotta find them when they're in stock. Um, but this is pretty, this is a pretty critical thing. If, uh, this is the first thing you check and the way you can tell if this is bad or not, if you took it out, that little black end piece would be blown out. Um, it would not have, it would not be as nice as what it looks like here. It would actually be, uh, you could, you could see that something happened to it. Uh, I actually have had the whole thing pop out, uh, from, uh, temperatures, but, uh, very critical to the system, and uh, there's the part number for it. Now, my bus came with a bunch of documentation, and I'm so thankful that some of the stuff it came from, and I've written on this documentation, because uh, it made copies of it before I started writing all over it, but what I'm showing you here, this is the actual marathon way the system works, and we're gonna, we'll come into this a little bit. But you can see those relays that I was talking to you about, the RDS, the RWI, the REH, all right? There's the little three amp fuse. Okay, this is critical to understand how your system actually works. And again, this is my bus, not yours. But here, I'm, I'm just showing you the pinouts of the relay, all right? And um, I'm gonna show you what that relay part number is. It's the same for all of them. But this little wiring diagram is really, and, and schematic is really important. So this is a documentation right out of the Wabasto uh, troubleshooting manual. And over here is the overheat fuse. You know, it's, it's showing you that it's 280 degrees Fahrenheit. Here's the temperature limiter fuse. It's important that you understand how these things work. This is the one with the two green wires. All right, so this... Uh, responds to open when the temperature reaches uh, 203 degrees, and then it'll close, it'll reset itself. They sell this same fuse with a white button that you can manually reset it, but uh, this is an automatic reset fuse. And here's the temperature control fu fuse. Now, as I was saying earlier, there's one that has a red and a green wire, and you can see that the temperature is higher than the one with the uh, uh, orange and white wires. Now, the reason for that is if it's in an Arctic enclosure, you have to use the red and green wire unit. You can probably get by with the orange one, but I'm all about doing what the factory did. And so I've got the red and green because I'm inside a stainless steel housing. And uh, once again, know how your system works right within the functional description. It tells you a little bit about stuff, uh, showing you things, this is important. How to read, get an idea of uh, what's happening. Um, it, here, right here in the control idle period, it's talking about, you know, sometimes the thing shuts down and when it's going to turn back on and when it's going to switch off and on and all the. Now with any troubleshooting, I think the most important thing is try to look at what a block diagram on this is. So we're looking right here, uh, up here in the top, it talks about if these things happen, all right, and you just kind of put your finger to the left and go to the right and find where the little dots are at. And you can see where I've circled some things about this, if the unit's overheating. This is a little test box. I'm telling you, this is a jewel of the Nile. I bought this from Tom when he was having his garage sale and I got a bunch of spare fuses. Sorry, Tom, I used all those fuses you gave me when I had this problem until I figured out that I still had air in the system. 
so this is an important note right here. Uh, since the heater operates in the 168 uh, degrees Celsius to 75 degrees Celsius on to off, off to on range, the vehicle engine may be hot, coolant above 75 degrees, the heater will not start. So what that's saying is if your coolant's already hot, meaning you're driving down the road to a Bosto system, you can't use it, all right? It's not going to turn on. You can leave it on, but it's actually not going to be on. The, that's where your bus is actually taken over. In a marathon, you're looking for, the other thing is that there's some relays. And um, right here on my bus, not yours, R8 is the Wabasto ignition solenoid. So this is going to send the signal to that relay that's marked RWI and turn that relay on and off. Really what those relays are controlling, like any other relay, it's, 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 it's controlling something that has a high amperage to it. So those solenoids, that's what the relay, so this turns the relay on for ignition, which uh, sends a signal to the RWI uh, relay, and uh, that's going to turn the solenoid valve on that's marked RWI that I showed you earlier. Marathon, uh, these diodes are on a lot of their circuits. You'll see these diodes, uh, but uh, again, this is showing you where what this does. You can see that I've taken the time and uh, once learning about the system, I've tagged all this, all right? So inlet coolant solenoid, that basically, that solenoid right there is allowing coolant to come from the tank. You know, you follow um, where this goes. Uh, I think I've got the other one tagged as well. This one right here. This is the return coolant solenoid, all right? So this line is coming from within the bus, making the closed loop, coming down here, coming through this pipe right here, goes to the bottom of the Wabasco, and that's where the pump is getting its coolant. And again, that's why it's important to not have any air in these lines. You've got to get the air out of these lines. And uh, the, okay, the way I've done it is fill the tank up on the top and the back there where you put your coolant for the bus all the way up to the top. You get a lot of static head pressure on that. I use the test box in place of this box right here. I put a test box and I start running the coolant pump. And then I turn the engine on and I turn the driver heat on. And I start bleeding. I start the whole bleeding process. Now. The test box, the Wabasto is not on. All that's on is the coolant pump. So I'm just pushing, I'm just trying to get the coolant coming through the pump up into the front. Uh, and it, 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 it takes a good hour, uh, almost two, to get this thing so it's a bled. Uh, if you lose, like I replaced this valve right here. So this valve is what we, you're clamping off these lines and stuff. And then I also put a new tip in that valve right there, all right? So I lost about five gallons of coolant out of the system. So it really, uh, you know, lessons learned, but uh, I'm hoping that uh, doing this and telling you a little bit about the system, that this might help you. So uh, I hope that helps. I've buttoned the system up now. Just gonna tighten up some screws and that sort of thing. Um, something else I did over the summers, I replaced these two fuel lines that come from the tank. Um, I, that, that was a, a pretty hard job uh, to do that, uh, the way Marathon snaked those lines. And, but I'm using mil-spec uh, diesel fuel lines. And um, part of the reason that happened is the second owner of this bus broke this exhaust flange and drove down the road. And that just released all the heat into this compartment. And what it ended up doing is making a lot of stuff in here very brittle. Uh, you know, if it's a rubber, it's going to be real brittle. So the fuel lines were very brittle. They were cracking and stuff. When you get up into the real wheel wells, they were pretty good. But, uh, you know, at 20 years of age, I mean, probably stuff to be thinking about is stuff like that. Fuel lines coming into the pump. And uh, so we know we're, we know we're working uh, because it's running again. It's, it's all good. Uh, I got a heck of a deal on this Robosto unit. This is uh, my second one. Uh, the first one's in great shape, but um, I was able to buy this off of eBay 
brand new military stock. This came off of military, and, and I'm telling you, the stuff that came with it was unbelievable. But I bought this for $2,000 brand new about a year ago. Um, so just pay attention to eBay. Uh, if you see a DB210 that's new, understand that the military uses those in vehicles as well. So like any uh, good engineer, uh, during the process of trying to find out what makes things tick, I took one of the fuses that had uh, blown out apart. And what I discovered is inside there is a little device, a fusible link, made by a company in Germany called Microtherm. It's an LT 140 degree centigrade. And there it is right there. And that's what makes uh, the high limit uh, fuse blow. Basically at 280 degrees, there's a little circuit inside that housing that gets potted in with epoxy that uh, is the high limit fuse. So uh, as I was saying, I wanted to show you guys what the uh, relay is. So this is the part number on the relay. And uh, all three of those relays back there, I got these from uh, uh, DigiKey or Mauser, I forget. I pretty much spared most of the relays on the bus. But this is, uh, this is basically what's hanging on the wall. And uh, sometimes seeing is always a good thing.